going on, Hood Nation? Nitz here, DFX. I'm going to talk about the new Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. I just got back from the theater watching it. And just in the background, there's just going to be some clips of Dragon Ball Fighters. I'll definitely leave the link uh, to the video below. It's someone that's just kind of showing off some of the moves. This is a spoiler, so you guys have been warned. I like the retelling of the beginning. It was actually like Dragon Ball Minus for some of you cats out there. It basically was the fan. He made his own version of Dragon Ball a while back, and Akiri noticed his work of the fan-made comic of Dragon Ball Minus. Now the dude is the right-hand man of Akiri and works with him. Goku this time, instead of being sent to destroy the planet, his father Bardock had a gut feeling. Versus the old tradition, remember Bardock was cursed to see the future. So this time, Goku was just thrown into a pod with his mom and dad. And you got a little bit of mom and dad actually seeing them talk and everything. It was very touching to see it. Also, it showed that Bardock actually was a lot nicer or kinder compared to the other Saiyans. It was really tearful for me personally to see him throw him in the pod. And he's sitting there screaming for his mom and dad, you know, Kakarot, as he just launched him in that space. During this time as well, we also are witnessing Broly being banished from the planet of King Vegeta. It was the same concept. He was still afraid that this Broly, like he's like, he's too damn powerful. One day he'll be a threat to everyone, the whole universe, blah, blah, blah. So in the midst of him being shipped to this random planet to survive on his own as a baby, his father jacked up some type of ship and went after his kid and decided to live with him on this planet. But Revenge was definitely the ultimate plot. We got, even got to see a young Raditz and Nappa with hair. <laughs> and even Vegeta, which was pretty cool. He, Vegeta did mention his brother again, which they only mentioned him once. I think, what was it, like Goku and Friends are back? There was like some random Dragon Ball special that came out about maybe 10 years ago. My point is, is that DB has even more wiggle room now. I'm hoping Vegeta's brother shows up one day. It's kind of interesting though how he hasn't yet, but like I said, since they mentioned him in the movie, there's a pretty strong chance he's going to show up. We start to actually experience a very good compiled moment of a timeline skip of Goku on Earth up until present day. It was very, it was just beautifully done, so mad props to that. There was two characters during this time in present day that worked for the Freezer Force. They actually discovered Broly and his dad on that planet that he was banned to. But Frieza actually realized that they have no idea that Frieza destroyed their planet. And the two Saiyans just wanted a revenge against King Vegeta. Once they heard about the planet was gone, they were pretty much content and like, whatever, right? But Frieza decided to exploit this and brought him straight to Earth because Vegeta, you know, the King's son was still alive. During this time, Broly did socialize with those two workers of Frieza and he actually built somewhat of a relationship with them so that was kind of nice it showed still a softer side of Broly and it was hinted towards he was basically kind of a slave and that's kind of how the two workers saw the way that he was being used by his father Frieza actually wants of course again to get his hands on the damn Dragon Balls and this time it's actually not for immortality which I thought was pretty funny he actually wants to wish his final form to be a little bit taller. <laughs> I actually thought that, that was pretty funny. I, I, I thought it was it was pretty comical. I do like that they were trying to add a little bit of the old school element in there as far as humor, which you'll pick up throughout this whole movie. Vegeta actually did really well in the fight. Uh, we never saw a Saiyan blue Vegeta, though. So he just went red form, which was very... That, to me, was kind of out of left field. Since we've never seen him ever go red form, <laughs> it almost makes me feel like Vegeta might, maybe going forward, prefer that form over his blue form. Which to me, I actually think would be pretty cool. He just he just got the respect he deserved, you know what I'm saying? Instead of being, uh, for lack of a better word, the, <laughs> the bitch of the DB movie franchise. As I'm sure a lot of you know that watched the Dragon Ball movies. Broly, though, was just... He just kept getting up like he was he, he literally is the hulk of the super of the saiyan race the animation though you guys it was amazing i'm pretty sure everyone could agree there the a whole choreography 
was just beautiful. And this has got to be one of the fastest uh, depictions in terms of combat. It was ridiculous. It was moving so damn fast that everyone is going to have to watch the movie several times just to actually catch every trade of blow that happened in the movie. It was it was amazing how smooth it, it, it was smooth too. So we're talking like a good 60 frame, you know, like it moved at high frames per second. We ain't talking about no lag or anything like it was amazing, but it was just like, whoa. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are probably going to mention the first person view of Broly during the fight versus Goku, because Goku did have to jump in after a while. And he, or at least he just wanted to try his hand against Broly. He gave us a beautiful cockpit view of the action as he was smashing Goku through mountains and raging and just trading blows. It was so damn cool. You actually felt bad for Broly. Like that's clearly what the, to me, what seemed to be what the aim of this movie was is to realize being used and abused and, and he's just so broken and mentally, you know, hurt. It, it was really shown through those two workers of Frieza. Eventually Goku does have to retreat with Vegeta because they're getting tired. And Broly just would not. He was like I said, he's he liked the Energizer Bunny or something. This is also probably one of the highlights of the movie is when they retreated, they deliberately flew by Frieza and they're like, have fun with him. And Frieza's like, what? And then Broly just went ape shit on Frieza. Hilarious how they executed that. It was it, it was definitely one of the like the funniest moments. They basically uh instant transmission out of there to uh, Piccolo. They practice how to do the fusion dance, and Piccolo's like trying to teach Vegeta. It was funny of them learning, and let's just say they had to practice a few times due to failure. And uh, Frieza was like a punching bag dude for like over an hour. It, it was, it was, a lot of people were laughing during this part. This was probably like another one of the highlights of the whole movie. So of course, you know they eventually master Gogeta. He he went back and basically just shit stomp Broly. After that, it was pretty much downhill. Broly couldn't even stand up to him. It didn't even seem like I don't even think. In fact, when the fight was over, Gogeta's outfit wasn't even scratched. It was it was a total shit stomp. Broly got saved because he was about to die. Those two friends I keep mentioning of Broly, they actually stole the Dragon Balls from Frieza and wished Broly away back to his planet so he wouldn't get hit by Gogeta's blast. And they took off to go to that planet too since they're pretty much renegades. Uh, I personally am happy that Broly's still alive because that obviously gives way more arc and love and who knows, maybe he'll fall in love with Khalifa. <laughs> who knows? I mean, they two kind of look alike. I mean, <laughs> but um, the point is, is that I just, I still like that he's alive. So he can be added to the, you know, the Z-Warriors in the future. Of course, he's not going to start off that way because they're not going to trust Goku too much. But I'm sure Goku, you know, he'll win their hearts over. And, you know, and it is nice that Goku, even though, you know, he's kind of not even dumb, he... He has that pure and lovable attitude, you know? He basically showed us this by visiting them, Broly. He basically just went instant transmission because he knows where his energy is. And he dropped them off food and uh, some capsules from Bulma. So they set up shop pretty damn good on that, that, that random planet. And Goku made it sound like, yeah, he's going to come back and visit with food all the time. And he just wants to train with Broly. You know, that's how Goku makes friends is through martial arts <laughs> it's kind of like you know this is bread and butter of everything now i guess i'm gonna touch base on somewhat i'm gonna assume this is gonna be a lot of the negative points of the movie from people um like i said I, I believe that some will be disappointed that gohan and mostly everyone else was not in the movie i don't want to go down the list because i that'll just make this video longer however we do have to realize and understand that this movie was about broly you know we have to think of it like the Bardock special or Trunk special, if you may. That is personally how I coped with it. Uh, the other disappointment that most fans of Dragon Ball had was that it was too short. <laughs> and th like That seemed to be the chant at the end of Hacked Movie Theater that was exiting out. I have to agree that, and the reason I say that is because Dragon Ball movies, they minus like the specials, you know, they can never touch all the bases in terms of storytelling. You know, you know, this is kind of how Dragon Ball works. But I think we've we've been gratefully spoiled by the TV series. You know, so we get hundreds of episodes taking sweet time, giving us all that Dragon Ball yumminess, you know. 
it's, I think that's really what it is as to like, so of course, when you go see a Dragon Ball movie, it's, 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 it's not enough that people, you know, people want to know more. Didn't really say much about Broly other than he had a little pet that got his ear cut off and now he wears it around his waist to remind him of his friend. You know, like, that's about the whole backstory of Broly we know. They might turn around and make an arc. Look what they did with the Frieza movie. You know, they made a Frieza Returns just to turn it into an arc. Pretty sure we all can agree this was a money-grabbing opportunity. <laughs> Love how Akiri, he went back to the silly aspect of Dragon Ball. You know, Akiri Toriyama with this movie. It really showed that a lot. But of course, being, you know, 2019... I know he couldn't have done everything that we love for the old school humor of Dragon Ball and do the like, you know, the PC police and generation butthurt. Kudos for him doing what he could for the old school fans. I would have to say this is by far the best looking Dragon Ball movie and episode. You know, if you compared any episode of all of them, just by far these fights were freaking amazing. It didn't do a lot of that repetitive, like, you know, those three, four motions that da, 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 they, like, exchange blows. They use the same motions very rarely. It was almost, like, every motion was original that was drawn. So, like, mad kudos to that. I'm actually going to uh, kind of just wait and see what videos pop up, what people are saying. I have a feeling Tyrone Magnus, <laughs> I have a feeling you guys are not going to like it. <laughs> I mean, maybe he will, maybe prove me wrong. I don't, I don't want to slut throw him out of the bus. <laughs> Well, I'm just kind of curious to see a lot of people's opinions and thoughts on it. But why I've decided to like this movie overall is because the reasons I gave earlier, we have to think of it as a Bardock special. Not a Bardock special featuring Gohan, Krillin, Yamcha, everybody else, and da-da-da. I just learned to appreciate the hard work, you know, of Akira Toriyama and his team for all their long hours of work going into this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, review, rant, whatever you guys want to call it. I'll see you guys soon. This is Mitch from BFX. Out.